Welcome, welcome. Uh, this is Dr. Lusheen or Professor Lusheen, and uh, this is Safety 41 Analysis and Design. Uh, this is week one. Uh, we're doing this is brand new. Everything we're going to be doing this semester is going to be building off of what I've learned in previous semesters. I've had a few opportunities to have online students, but the course was never online. It was always sort of a hybrid, remote thing, and so uh, I'm going to be experimenting this semester, and you're going to be part of it. And it's going to be probably a better experience for you than future classes in which students will be pretty much on their own. So let's kind of go over it. You can look up and see what the objectives are, but I'm changing the course to almost be like a 50-50 share between your professional development and career preparation. And we will be more heavily loaded on those two items for the first several weeks. And then near the end of the semester, it'll be more heavily loaded with assessment techniques and design practice. Um, and, but there'll be a little bit always there. So just know that um, my goal for you is to make sure that everybody has an internship lined up for summer, whether it's your capstone or not, and that you've demonstrated these skills in order to find that first job, um, to grow your network, to seek professionalism and, pro and specialized training. So that's what this is all about. So I don't really like the name of the course. I'm probably going to change it after this semester. And again, you're going to be my um, inaugural group. <laughs> so I'm gonna. what I've done here is I've cut and paste a bunch of the little windows or modules in our Canvas page, instead of going to the Canvas page and having it be all messed up. So first, there is some pre-semester things I want you to do. Some of you have already done it, thank you. First and foremost, complete the um, pre-semester survey. It shouldn't take you very long. Um, I do that every semester with all my classes, just to kind of get a read on the students. Uh, and it's important for me because I do compare end of semester responses to pre-semester responses, shows you know, what you what you learn, change in perception, things like that. Please do that, and then I will just award the points. Next is to um, either provide your you know, URL, to a link to your profile page on LinkedIn, or a picture of it. And please reach out to me and connect with me if you aren't already. Uh, we're going to be using LinkedIn quite a bit this semester. It's going to be a big part of our weekly professional development. And then if you could upload your resume as soon as possible, I don't want you to try and improve it. I just want you to upload it because I'm going to use it again as a comparison that after you work with Career Services or Frank Lanco over the semester um, that uh, you have some mentors look at it and then we get to see it at the end. Again, a comparison from pre and post. So please do those things. Everything by the 25th, which is Friday, right? As far as the core syllabus, I'm going to be cutting out some pieces of it in this presentation, but definitely take a look at it. Um, the schedule may change. I kept it kind of broad because I'm going to be learning as you are. Uh, another thing you can look at is the internship provider agreement. Um, if you haven't already, what we require, uh, we have this basic uh, description of what we want you to do for safety and health case studies. We're going to spend a lot of time uh, reviewing and talking about previous capstone case studies leading up to the ones you're all going to be doing. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, you're also going to be creating a binder that we'll look at midway through and at the end. Again, it's meant to give you the experience needed for the, um, the course. And it's something that I'm going to talk about with each of you individually um, and, and every week as we move forward. So right now I'm keeping it vague on purpose because I'm going to come and narrow in after everybody gets through sort of the adjustment period of the course. I don't want to hit you with something that important that quickly. And then you can see what a case study sample looks like. We're going to be looking at a lot of them and we're going to be doing a lot of grading too. And I think the what I learned from last semester is the experience of going through the grading um, is really, really important. So again, over on the right, I kind of given you some tips of things we're going to be doing uh, as far as development skills, uh, leading all the way up to learning on the job. That's such a big thing, and I'm going to share that with you. And I've got a great opportunity that I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Here are the graduation and capstone information. So please look at all these so you understand when you need to apply for graduation, what it entails, when do you do it, the semester before you do your capstone. Um, so, so, you know, that semester before, get it done. You can get it done any time during that, um, that semester. Uh, once you are looking for a capstone internship, if they've never had, had an intern or capstone intern from Whitewater before, it needs to be approved by our um, in 
capstone internship coordinator, which is Dr. Bookman. Um, and I'm sort of the backup for Dr. Bookman, so I also help out on that. Um, so once it's approved and you've begun the paperwork with the company or the site, then you need to fill out a few forms and that goes to um, Kay Vant in our office. And so there's a file, you know, you fill out those things and then we, she verifies that you're going to complete all of your courses and your GPA is there and everything else because um, you have to have a 2.5 in order to do your capstone. And then uh, once that's all approved, you're all set. And you just got to finish out the semester you're in and you're all set. Yeah. One thing that I have over here is never stop looking for job opportunities. I have students who in this course have said at the beginning, oh, I already locked up my um, cap, my capstone intern, I'm all set. And so they don't really put much effort into the, the what I'm providing, you know, working with crew services, learning to use Handshake, learning to use LinkedIn, all that stuff. They kind of coast. And several students have lost that opportunity near the end of the semester. And now they're asking me for help. It's like, I gave you the help. The help was three months ago. Why didn't you engage like I told you to? And they're like, oh, don't be like that. Always think that, okay, I might have something locked down, but I'm still going to expand my horizons, build build network, learn about other companies, learn about other industries. Don't sit back on your haunches and think that everything's going to be okay because I've seen too many times students are ready to start in a week or two weeks and the company, for whatever reason, pulls it out from underneath them and now they've got nothing. Build those skills now. Build it up. You could even go on some interviews. You know, what? what's the... What's the harm that if it really comes down to them making an offer to you, say, oh, you know, I've got this other opportunity. You might be able to actually get um, a wage increase um, by, by not, what, what do you want to say? Comparing one to the other, you know, coming in and saying, hey, I've got this other one. Don't ever stop. Always be looking. That's my best advice. Always be looking. In the um, so each week I'm going to have this recorded video like this that you guys can listen to, and then I'm also going to try to provide a guest speaker, which will be a designated time. You don't have to be there. It'd be great if you did, um, but it's, that'll be recorded too. So there'll be two parts to um, every week. Uh, this week we've got Frank Lenko from the uh, Kobe Career Services, and he's going to go through and teach you how to use Handshake um, as a college student. This is, you know, this is an advantage to have access to this. Once you leave college, then you're kind of, you're left to using the other sites. I need everybody to join the American Society of Safety Professionals if you haven't already. If you have, you can go log into your account, send me a picture, a screenshot uh, to verify it. If not, join. This is really important. I used to make it optional, but this is something, this is like your mom forcing you to eat your vegetables. It's good for you. It needs to be done. It's only 15 bucks. If you stick with it, your career will be better and you save a ton of money too. Once you get out, um, you're not paying what everybody else is. We do, I just received this uh, <laughs> two days ago on Friday the 20th. Uh, this is from Latrice Roan. She is the student membership uh, rep, uh, coordinator, manager. I, I forget what her title is. With the American Society of Safety Professionals or ASSP. And so if you haven't joined, there is a promotional code we'd like you to put in your student application. It just gets UWW put into a fishbowl and they draw prizes. So please do that. If you have questions, let me know. Um, so we're going to be using LinkedIn quite a bit. I have become very prolific, pro prolific with it. Um, I'm getting more serious with it. I want to get serious, even more serious this semester. If you don't have a profile already, just let me know because one of the assignments this week is to send me a URL. If you want to quick create one and start playing around with it and then send it to me, that's also fine. But uh, there, here's just a few things you can look at. And this is again from Canvas that can, that can help you. And um, I would like you to track how many connections you have because I'm going to try to come up with a way to increase those connections. Actually, I've got several methods we're gonna try out. Here is my um, profile page. It needs work, I know this, so don't copy what I'm doing, but I use this more as a, a way to reach out to other people. Uh, I think the, the key thing I wanna show you this is I've got uh, 2,868 followers right now, and so my goal is to increase the number of followers of my profile versus how many connections you get. <laughs> uh, my connections are, are so many that they just put 500 plus. So um, 
please do that. I use LinkedIn, uh, one, to connect with colleagues and friends and peers and find new uh, friends, colleagues, and peers, and also to track job opportunities. And so I have it set up that weekly it generates a list of the position safety director within Madison area, um, nationwide EHS director. I just like to see what's out there and what's going on. I did a quick search on safety internship in Wisconsin, and I found these. So once you get you know, out of school, you need to find other sources for finding job openings. And so I think LinkedIn is very good, but you can use things like Indeed. Um, I don't really use Monster anymore. I do a Google search once in a while and that'll bring things up. Glassdoor is sometimes a good one. Um, but there are also groups and individuals you can follow on LinkedIn that are constantly posting things like Shirley Parsons is one um, that posts things. Um, I post a lot of stuff. So like over here on the right, um, and I, I wasn't able to fit in the one I got on Wednesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of last week, I had people reach out to me and say, hey, we've got a position or an internship or something. Could you please post it? And so that's something that I do for people. Um, these two people know me. Uh, I know a little bit of them. Uh, but a lot of people out of the blue will reach out to me and say, hey, I see you, you're, you post a lot of things. Could you post mine? And so I do that for people. So definitely connect with me because uh, it seems like too often companies, oh, you know, I want someone who has, you know, one to three years experience. So the best I can do is post on LinkedIn. In order, One way I want to help grow your connections, the number of people you're networking with on LinkedIn, is to do a student spotlight for you. And there is a, there's a module on the Canvas page. I don't expect you to get to it right away, but I'll be reminding you as we go through. And so here's one design. And the students I've done this for have, what did, what did one, one of them like increased the number of connections by fivefold, fourfold, fivefold. So five times what you currently have. Some just didn't have anything and they shot up to like 80. So this, I've got a lot of great friends and this is one way to kind of spotlight you and your highlights and things like that. And I've had students, people will reach out to them um, and offer them positions just by this. So here's another look. I did four different design. You can choose which one you like. And of course, I'll have you approve it before I post it on LinkedIn. It's just a, a benefit I try to provide my A&D students. Not everybody takes advantage, which I think is missed opportunity. Here is the course assignments. So please do that pre-survey. That's 2.5% uh, of your overall grade. I just give it like two points, but it's 2.5%. If you do the one at the end for the class climate, that's another 2.5%. So that's 5% of your grade. For the weekly assignments, we'll go over that in a little bit. It's 15% of your grade, but I will drop the lowest. For the course binder, we grade it twice um, during week eight and week 16. I am a little bit tougher grader in week eight. Um, and then what I want you to do is take my comments and use that to improve uh, the final one. So the balance of the two is 40% of your grade. You'll, have to, you'll be doing two case studies on your own. Uh, that's a total of 30%, so 15% each. You'll be doing a final presentation of your favorite one of those two. That's 10% of the grade. So that's the 100%. It's the weekly assignment that'll seem like the most amount of work though. And it's the course binder is kind of built into that. So it's the little things you do more frequently that actually give you a majority of the grade. And that's, that's why I think I've built all of my classes. Here's the schedule for the first half. You can see here, uh, the first week, we're focusing primarily on getting to know each other, understanding the course, and doing professional development things. As we move forward into the future, you see the balance of it kind of shifts that, yeah, we'll be attending to, especially when we're leading up to the fair. Once we get past the internship fair, if you can make it, uh, that's kind of the turning point that we go, we'll, we'll spending, be spending more time on analysis and design things. You'll see here during the first week in March is when I'll be meeting with you virtually to go over your binder. So that'll be the first grading of it. Otherwise, it'll just be the weekly stuff. First case study is going to be due the week, bef the week before spring break. And we'll be, we'll be focusing on it. Everything is building up to the big grading points of the course. After spring break, we're going to continue to do these things. We'll have a ca second case study, the presentations. Um, and then what I do is I do like an exit interview meeting with each of you one-on-one, which we're going to do this week as part of the assignment. And um, we'll kind of talk about it and we'll do the final binder grading. 
Uh, here are some important dates to keep in mind where I won't be as available because I'll be working at this stuff. So there'll be the career fair. Uh, the safety one is in the lobby of Highland Hall, I believe, on the 15th. That's a Wednesday. In April, um, we're going to have a, a Wisconsin uh, technical meeting at the Community Education Center uh, on campus or just you know, next to Walmart in Whitewater. And so that'll be a big meeting. I hosted it in November. It was a confined space entry, and it was very well attended. I think we had ended up having over 60 people attend that. So well, you need to be thinking about professional development, and if you're available, this would be a great thing. I believe that's a Friday, if I'm not mistaken. The um, the Wisconsin Safety Health Conference and Expo are is April 17th to the 19th. I think I'm speaking on the 18th, so I will probably be there the both days. The 18th um, is a Tuesday, 19th is a Wednesday. The 17th are their like um, half day, full day um, sessions, like workshops and stuff like that. The Minnesota Safety Conference is the first through the third. I typically speak at it. Last year, I actually exhibited at it, and so I won't be around then either. And what I didn't put on here is the Region 5 ASSP Regional Operations Committee meeting or ROC meeting, which is going to be in Chicago, and I think it's on the 13th and 14th. So I won't be around on the 13th and 14th. So that's it's going to be busy for me. On the last page of the syllabus, I kind of give you a little bit of my background so you know what I'm about. But one thing that isn't here because it's brand new is that I am currently the safety director for April Air. <laughs> um, here's just a few pictures I took basically of the plant right outside my office. Um, <laughs> this it's, it's kind of funny how this happened, but I did this for you guys, just so you know, that in early December, <laughs> not even a month, yeah, a little bit over a month ago, um, a friend of a friend, you know, again, through LinkedIn, reached out to me and said, hey, um, it was a, it was it's it was an insurer, and they said, "Hey, I've got a client. Um, they're looking for some assistance with their safety program." And I said, "Well, that's very vague. Could I please speak to your contact just so I can find out what they need, so I can get them to the right people?" And I was I was gonna, actually going to try to line it up as an internship for one of you. Come to find out, talking to the safety person or the sorry the HR person, that no, they need someone with a lot of experience who can just pick up where the last person left off. So an intern was out. Um, they didn't really want to just get a consultant to come in and point things out. They wanted someone there. So it's more of a term um, type position. And it's really difficult to find people who will do that. So I threw my hat into the ring. I said, hey, um, I've got a semester with less responsibility, more time. Let me help you out. So I, gave them, I wrote them up a proposal. They accepted it. And so I started the... Uh, day after Christmas, or the second, the, the, actually 27th, that's right, because the 26th was off, because 25th is on a Sunday, that's the way they work. So I started that day, and I've been working almost full-time, not quite, because I've got other responsibilities, and I'm learning a lot. And here's the thing, the reason I took it. I'm going to be creating real-world case studies out of my experiences at this company, the development and review of programs, development and delivery of training, um, job hazard analyses, safety auditing, purchasing, everything. I can do it all. I can basically build from start to finish how to audit a safety program, triage it or prioritize things and what it takes to get it done. And that's why I did it. Because with this online course, typically when this is a face-to-face -face traditional course, I take you guys out to companies. Um, <laughs> the thing was last semester, we didn't meet in the classroom for six straight weeks because we were going to different sites. And it was pretty awesome. We were seeing a lot of cool things. Well, I can bring it to you now. Videos, pictures, actual things I'm working on. I can bring it directly to you. And so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm working at April Air and at UW-Whitewater. And I'm absolutely loving it. So <laughs> that's really exciting, I think. So here's week one. Each week will kind of look like this. Um, obviously, what's missing is this PowerPoint I'm using, created for you, and the video link. I'll be using my YouTube channel. Here are the uh, problems you're going to work on. I'm going to show you these in a moment. This is where you upload all of your work, the week uh, one assignment folder. Frank Lango is going to be speaking on Thursday. Here's last year's, or last, yeah, last year's, Okay. He came into the classroom last semester. So last year, he had a PowerPoint. This will be updated. It'll say spring 2023. And then all the links you need to access that stuff. If I turn the page, now what I've got here is every week there'll be an agenda. 
I expect this to be the your prep. Prepping for that week, take a look at the agenda, the topics I've selected, uh, who you're going to be presenting to, what I expect you to do for readings. This, I've got the pre-semester work here and then the assigned work. So always kind of look at that before you get into anything else to see what I expect. I think this is a good way to encapsulate it because we get out into the real world. That's the way a lot of things work. It's just an agenda and it's usually just an email. I'm trying to make it a little bit more detailed for you. And then in the assignment folder, I have everything here. So I don't have a worksheet you fill out per se, because in the real world, they don't have that. They just go, I want you to get, give this to me, write it up. And so I'm going to be looking for your ability to present things professionally. I always kind of remember that. This first semester, or sorry, this first week, I understand there's going to be a learning experience here. But as we move forward, I'll be giving you more and more guidance to make it tighter, to make it more professional, to look good. So first... Um, I'm going to want everybody to, uh, I guess it's just make an appointment. I, I, for, I always forget that um, Frank's going to be speaking on Thursday and you're not going to get it done by Sunday. So scratch this, this will change. It's just make a meeting with Frank. If you met, if you meet with him, great. But we'll look at the resume update next week. So cancel this first one. Um, definitely give me, show me evidence that you've joined ASSP and also um, there'll be a handout that you can look at to become a free student member of National Safety Council. It's which, What it's going to allow you to do is to get um, the monthly publications of um, Safety Professional Journal, which comes from ASSP, and Safety and Health from National Safety Council. Both these things, it's great to have. You can get them electronically if you want. You can get them in paper if you want. I get them in paper, uh, so it gets mailed to me. Um, having those reading through those and kind of following is one of the aspects of pursuing the CSP. When I took the CSP, some of the questions related to what, who, what organizations publish which periodicals. Um, might as well start now. Next is uh, I want you to perform a basic uh, search for safety internship. Uh, you know, you can use Handshake, you can use LinkedIn, whatever. I want to see what, what, you, what comes out with that because as we go through the semester, I want you to come up with a technique that's really easy to use and follow that you're tracking what's out there and how to apply and tracking where you apply and when you're contacting them. That's the technique that gets you opportunities versus waiting for one to fall into your lap. I want you to do a search and I already gave you some op options. Um, I want you to look for opportunities for technical meetings, tours, training, you know, within whatever area you're in. ASSP is a good start. National Safety Council or Wisconsin Safety Council, wherever you're located, is also a good start. Look on LinkedIn. There's free training. And I think Frank will talk about that in his presentation on Thursday. I want you to email me this week. Uh, we can make this a regular thing if it goes well. If not, I'll just talk to you at the end of the semester one-on-one. -on -one. I want to meet with each of you. I can pretty much meet any day after 5 p.m. Central um, because, again, if I'm not on campus working, I'm at April Air working. And so evenings are always best. Sundays are really good. It's I'm recording this on a Sunday right now. This is usually when I do my weekly prep work. Um, I'll try to record ahead of time as we move into the future, but right now I'm kind of playing it based on what I hear from all of you this first week. I want to make sure it works for everybody. There are, there's some coursework, I'm mean, sorry, there are some problems that I want you to do this week. Every week I'm going to try to present you with at least one problem. If not, by the end, actual real world projects you'll be working on. I'll find out, you know, what you have access to. You know, can you perform case studies within your current work environment or do you need me to generate them for you? Each week you need to be do a personal reflection. I'm going to see how you do. My job at April Air, I've been doing weekly journaling, sorry, no, daily journaling. Some days it's just a couple pages. Some days it's up to six or seven pages. Um, I will share that with you next week or the week after just to kind of let you know how I'm doing it. Um, but it is critical when you get into a new position that you are journaling and reflecting because it's really easy to lose sight of what your initial goals are because things get busy every day. And I've been working really hard to maintain that direction, that balance. Here are the, these, these are the problems for this week. I made them actually fairly simple. They're related to, you know, what you're going through now as a student. The first one is you, you're going to look at a transcript and figure out which course is Morty. Uh, and, and if anybody knows who Morty Sanchez is, thumbs up. We're on the same page. If you don't, it's from the Rick and Morty cartoon, <laughs> which I love. Um, 
So here, what you want to do is pick out the courses that he could retake in fall of 2023. Okay, yeah, so that's not even on here. Uh, in order to get the minimum GPA needed to do their internship of a 2.5. So you're all kind of being faced with this. So go ahead and figure this out. Obviously, you pick the lower ones. You see what the weight of it is. Over here, I've got the breakdown of what a grade means and how it contributes to the GPA. You may have to do some online searching on your own to figure this out. I want to see how you can solve this problem. The next problem, which is another tab, is here's a course grade book. And I've got a few questions here for the different students here on what they would need to get on the final exam in order to get a certain grade. Okay, so do those problems. These are things I do constantly. And so I'm wondering how you guys can figure it out. Because when again, what I'm finding out with my position at April Air is if nobody has the answer, I got to find it out. And so that's what I've been doing. And that's what's expected. I believe this is the last slide. And what, what I put here is this is going to be, yeah, it's, it's going to take a little time for me to hit a stride on how I want to present this course. Uh, so I'll be reaching out to you all quite a bit for your input. Uh, but one thing that's really important to me is that you guys are receiving mentoring. And so once I get to know you and what you want to go into, where you, you know, basically where you live, where you are, where you want to be, I'm going to start connecting you with professionals who can guide you to get to where you want to be. Uh, last semester, I kind of ran out of time. We only did like one, we, oh, we did one mentoring, one contact with current uh, capstone interns. I'm going to do that again here. I have to just find out who the current capstone interns are. A lot of them were in my class last semester. So I want you to speak to students who are currently going through what you're going to go to in the near future, then also talk to people who have been in the field for decades, um, like me, and uh, give you good advice. And you'll be, you'll will blah, blah, blah. you'll you will report back what you learned during those interviews. Yikes, man! My mouth is just losing it. So that's basically it. Um, I will be recovering, man. I will be covering these topics a little bit each week, but this is just a really good start. Um, yeah, because I there are things I've learned being at April Air, former students have worked there. And I found out that some of the behaviors that students exhibit in my classes tend to be following them out into their internships and into their first job or first few years. And man... So they let one of my former students go at this place where I am, actually several students, and uh, former students. It, it, what I found out is you really have to learn the lay of the land, you know, what the sort of the company expectations and rules are, who, who are the power brokers, who do you need to impress, you know, who needs a voice, and kind of play it that way. Um, and... What my former student did is, yeah, they went out and talked to the workers and got on the side of the workers, but did nothing to impress management. And so management didn't see their value. I had another student that didn't spend any time on the floor. They just sat in the office and they wrote programs and management was impressed, but it wasn't really pragmatic. It wasn't from the floor. So you got to find a good balance between the two and communication and then presenting yourself, presenting what you're doing is very important so if you're not good at i don't want to say bragging because that's not the proper term but to show your value to the company if you're not good at that you're not going to stay there very long um and you also have to have a desire sort of a passion for this which it's hard to develop that and so we can talk about that too because again i am hyper busy but i am loving it i i miss doing the day-to-day -day safety stuff. I'm having so much fun and I'll share that with you. That's all I got. So uh, please take a look at the Canvas page. Hope to see you on Thursday. Otherwise, reach out to me and let me know when we can meet. I think our meetings will last under 30 minutes, probably closer to 20. I just want to get to know you, what's going on. I'll be taking notes. Uh, again, I want to be able to serve you all this semester the best I possibly can and learn from you what I could build into a future very much more asynchronous or self-study class like this. I don't know if that can be achieved. I don't know, but that's what the university wants. So I'll pursue it. You know what? I'm going to shut up now. So I really look forward to working with all of you. This is going to be a great opportunity for all of us. I'll talk to you later.